Is hot better than cold therapy for recovery? What's up guys, back with another educational video and this week we are talking about hot versus cold for recovery from exercise, but first, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel and leave a comment for the algorithm. So a new study just came out looking at recovery after exercise induced muscle damage, assessing it by either peak torque, rate of force development and soreness and whether or not cold bath or hot bath made a difference in recovery. They had trained men do a really damaging protocol, like eight sets of leg extensions with forced eccentrics, like a really, really highly muscle damaging protocol. And then they had them get into three baths, one being 11 degrees Celsius, which is about 50 degrees, 51 degrees Fahrenheit. Another one being 36 degrees Celsius, which is around like 96 degrees. I think kind of trying to match body temperature a little bit. And then they had another one at 41 degrees Celsius, which was around 106 degrees Fahrenheit. And that was supposed to elevate their core temperature. And so they looked at the time course of recovery. So what they found was only the hot bath improved the rate of force development recovery, as well as muscle soreness. The hot bath and the cold bath did attenuate the reduction in strength, but in the cold bath, it was more about blunting the initial reduction in strength because cold kind of like slows down some of these metabolic processes. So what you're actually getting is not a true recovery, it's just blunting the initial drop. Whereas it appears the heat may help with actual recovery as assessed by some of these other metrics. Now, how does this fit in what we know about the overall grand scheme of things? What we know is that cold bath does seem to reduce inflammation, that cold exposure does reduce inflammation, but it also impedes muscle protein synthesis and it's been shown to actually reduce the rate of muscle and strength development in response to resistance training. Whereas hot bath or sauna doesn't seem to have the same negative effects. In fact, sauna or hot bath appears to have some of the same benefits of cold plunging or cold bath without the downsides. And then with sauna, I don't know about hot bath, but I know with sauna, they see a reduction in blood pressure and there's also a reduction in the risk of cardiovascular disease. So some people have said, well, you know, the cold bath, it's just because they're doing it after resistance training. If they did it at a different time, it would be fine. I mean, maybe, but there's no studies looking at that yet. And based on what I know about muscle protein metabolism, you know, it's not like the initial rise in muscle protein synthesis is just in the hour after training, which is when they, they do these studies. It, it lasts for anywhere from like 16 to 72 hours. So this idea that if you do cold plunge before, or if you do it well away from your workout, still again, at minimum, it's a 16 hour response of muscle protein synthesis. And for people who aren't advanced, it's probably much longer than that. So if that's the case, you're probably gonna get some attenuation of that pathway at some point. And again, if you're doing it daily, it has been shown to reduce the rate of muscle protein synthesis and muscle development. And if you wanna say again, well, you could separate it and it's just after a workout, there's no studies that show that. Now, can you build muscle cold plunging? Sure you can. I'm not saying you can't. What I am saying is it is not optimal for muscular and strength development. So if you are playing a sport that lean mass and strength are important, such as bodybuilding, powerlifting, strongman, even like things like football. You know, lean mass is, a, is correlated with better performance in sports like American football. So even besides the straight up strength sports, there are some other sports that lean mass is a consideration. And even something like mixed martial arts, yes, the, the biggest, strongest person doesn't always win, but when all things are equal, when skill is equal, then the bigger, stronger person often wins. And so lean mass and strength are a consideration. Where does that intersect? When do I think a cold plunge might be appropriate? Well, for example, if you're a, a, an MMA fighter, right? And you're deep into prep, you're in a deficit because you're cutting weight, you're really, really sore, overtrained, but you need to peak for this fight. And in order to do that, you got to keep training. 
Well, in that case, perhaps blunting of a little bit of muscle protein synthesis is still okay to allow you to reduce that soreness enough so you can continue training and sparring and doing whatever you need to do. I would argue that the research suggests you could probably do sauna and get similar benefits or a hot bath and get similar benefits in terms of soreness without doing the cold plunge. Another place where cold plunge could be useful is if you are doing sporting events that have multiple events in a day where you don't have time to recover between events. So for example, you know, American football, you play and you have a week off for, for most teams. A lot of people can recover in that period of time. But if you are say uh, an Olympic athlete or a wrestler and you're doing multiple matches in a day, well then maybe if you're really sore after one of those matches, doing a cold plunge, okay, that could have some utility because if it gets your soreness low enough to where you can go and compete again, I can see that being a reason to use it. And then the other thing the cold plunge people always say is, well, it's just the, the dopamine, the dopamine. Look, I, dopamine isn't my thing. I, I don't know, you'd have to talk to, to Andrew Huberman about that. He knows more about that stuff than I do. But if you like cold plunge, do cold plunge. That's fine. But understand what the limitations of that might be in terms of muscular development, strength development, and those sorts of things. I never wanna to just totally throw the baby out with the bath water. Again, I think in most cases, for most people, a hot bath or a sauna is probably gonna get you the same benefits, if not better, because you're not blunting hypertrophy, than doing a cold bath or cold exposure. But again, if you like doing cold plunge, do cold plunge. I'm not saying it sucks. I'm not saying it has no benefits. I'm just saying I think for the majority of people and what their considerations are for their goals, cold plunge has limited applicability compared to something like hot bath or sauna. And at the end of the day, the absolute best recovery modality you can have is getting enough sleep, managing your psychological stress. Those two things are by far the biggest levers you can pull. And when people say, like, what do you mean managing psychological stress? I don't have control over the stress in my life. No, you don't have control over the things that happen to you in your life. But you can control how you respond to those things and how much you fixate on those things and how much you ruminate on those things. And the research has shown people who ruminate more actually tend to have more psychological stress and they recover worse. They have more pain, they recover from injuries slower. I've been talking about this for probably six months now. What happens in the mind affects the body and what happens in the body affects the mind. Look no further than the research on exercise showing that exercise acutely improves memory, improves cognition, improves symptoms of depression, improves symptoms of anxiety in a big way. And the reverse is also true. If you're spun up all the time, if you're stressed out all the time, if you're ruminating over stuff all the time, it is gonna negatively impede your ability to recover from physical exercise and it's gonna raise your risk of injury and raise your sensitivity to pain. I hate to say it, but the stuff that works isn't super sexy. Again, where that can intersect is, hey, if you say, I like doing a cold plunge, it relaxes me, I think you're crazy, but hey, if it relaxes you, by all means, Maybe that is actually more important than some of the negatives from the cold plunge if it does relax you. Personally, I'd rather relax in a sauna or a hot shower or a hot bath, but hey, you do you. All right, guys, hope you liked the video and I'll catch you guys next week.